Good morning, friends. I want to do a short video on two verses. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18, where it says, make sure it's chapter 7 on in here. Chapter 7, verse 18. The children gathered wood, and the fathers kindled the fires, the fire, and the women knew their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offering unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. And also in Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 19 And when we burn and when we burn incense to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her, and pour out drinks offering unto her, without our men? And you might ask, well, what did that got to do with the cross? Because these little cakes, if you looked at history, and trust me, I've done five years of study on this, not steadily, but on and off, looking at it for five years. These little round cakes, which the Catholic Church uses as wafflers today, and this is not cat, uh, to attack the Catholics, but the truth is what it is. Back then, they made, in Jeremiah, these little cakes, and they would put the sign of a T on it that stood for, if I can pronounce it, Tazmoon, uh, ta, uh, Tamzoon, I ain't pronouncing that right, uh, Tazoon, Tamzoon, I can't pronounce it, but it's T-A-M-M-U-Z, T-A-M-M-U-Z. And it was a Polynesian god. And when the Polynesians at one time took her Bab the Babylonian car, you know, with Nimrod, Samaria, and all that, you all can be traced back to then. And all they did was change the names of these gods, and, and you can trace it all the way in history. And this T, which stood for this God that they worship, eventually, I'm not sure if it was, I don't think it's here in Jeremiah. It could have been. I never researched it that far. I'm, I've done it in the past, but I can't remember. It eventually, or at least by this time, or at least it did later on, it came to be known as the God of Fertility. If we only want to get pregnant, they would offer, you know, to this guy, and like in Roman culture, different meats that they would buy, different stamps of different gods would put on the meat. If you want to get pregnant, you would buy this certain meat. And, and Paul talked about that in the New Testament, that eating this meat was okay. It was your intent. Was you like it because you just like a good piece of steak? I was intensely buying and eating it because it had this mark of a God upon it. But that's a different story. I just want to sh show that the sign of the cross, if you look in history, can be traced at least back to the Babylonian car. Some scholars, I guess in their findings and diggings, has even put it back to even an earlier date, which I hadn't been able to verify. But you can at least take it all the way back to about Babylon Cough, way back in Genesis, I mean, Nimrod. And it was, actually, it started off as an X. It also has a circle with a T in it. It also is the head of a, of a stick figure man, which, oh, but they just stick strong of a man. It was of a man they were doing. It was of this idol, this, this, this God that they worship. And eventually it came to be the sign of the cross. 
But if you studied your Bible and caught, which most people have, you would find all traces of that in our culture today. And many of it is in our churches. And the question you have to ask yourself is all these things pagan worship that we are that we are, that symbols that we have today are they are just copycats of what Satan was doing and trying to imitate in what Christ was to do. I think it is an imitation of what Satan was trying to do and imitating what Christ was supposed to do well as well as what he did when he was to come. And Satan almost succeeded in destroying the true belief in Christ by creating this cocky cat of the things of the Lord before he comes. In this idol worship, I, I mean, I, I'm going to, I don't want to get into it because it would lead me way off, but I just want to explain that we are to worship the cross. We are supposed to worship the resurrection, Christ. How many of us, how many people do you know that would spend hundreds of dollars upon a cross necklace and would take more precious care of that when they take it off, make sure they put it in a nice, good spot and all that good stuff, than they do in helping to feed your fellow man or even giving a deeper consideration in their spiritual growth with the Lord. They put all their faith, without, most of them even realizing it, into symbols and relics, which is pagan by nature, where, 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 where it derived from. And like I said, you have to determine your own mind with all these things that came out of Babylon and call that definitely was inspired by Satan, a copy cat of what Christ was to do, which I believe, or are just Christianity picking off and paganism left off on, on a lot of these symbols and uh, specifically that of the cross and using it today, not even realizing where it started from or what it really is. I think it's a copycat, but I'm giving both sides of the story because I'm always honest, and you have to determine for yourself on what you want to believe on that. Rather, Christians are just picking up on paganism, and, and, and a lot of these relics they have accepted into their beliefs and hold dear, or are these things just a copycat of what Satan was trying to do and to destroy and trying to destroy what Christ was to do when he came. Which I which that's the part I believe and actually he, he almost exceeded speaking of tongues. And they had babble back then when they get yourself all going. All of it was to destroy the real moving of Christ and Satan almost exceeded. And I just want to leave it there. You could go on for a year on teaching on a Babylonian cult and how all these relics and things we have today in the church, how they came down through. And some of it, a lot of it came through during when Rome was starting to fall. Rome was in bad shape. So Rome opened her doors to Rome, the church. Rome church opened her door to allow the pagans in, the heathens in. Because they couldn't wait to join because they was never allowed to before. So when they came in, they brought in a lot of their idol worship. The church tried to get them to do away with them. They weren't because they were so ingrained into it. So the, so the church says, okay, you can keep them, but just call them by other names. So that's what happened. When you walk, go drive by a church and you see Mother Mary holding a baby Jesus, that's paganism. That's that, uh, I think her name was Samarius, Samarium or Samarius, of the Babylonian cult holding their reincarnation of Nimrod, which would get into another long teaching how that came about. 
and it doesn't, I won't get into that, but all these things you see are taken by nature. That's how they start off as. Of course, like I said, I believe Satan, repeat myself here so you really understand where I'm coming from. Satan was trying to copycat what Christ was to accomplish. And he almost exceeded. Because from you take him way back in Genesis, underneath Nimrod, up to today, and well, you, you see a lot of these things at rosary, and um, let me just stick with a cross guy. I'm not here to attack people with religious beliefs. You know, I just speak the truth. But I do want, um, you have to say what it is. When, when you look at history and you see these things, you have to make it very clear. So how does Jeremiah 7... 18 and Jeremiah 44 19 shows the cross because of pagan worship of this Phoenician god Tasmoon. I'm not pronouncing it right, it's uh Tazum. Tazum. I can't pronounce it right now. I looked it up on my computer when you got the little sound you can get on, but I can't remember what it was. And, and it was a you know, a symbol of the Babylonian God, you know, because every culture, well, I won't get into that. I think I explained enough on that. Like I said, this is an issue you could talk about a year on straight. You never run out of things to talk about when it comes to the Babylonian cult and the influence and how it filtered down in our history and was accepted into the churches to that. So... I just want to give you a little lesson on that. And uh, I leave that that and you can come to your own conclusion on what you want to believe. Was Satan just copycatting what Christ was to do and almost destroying the real message, which I believe? Or do you believe Chris Annie and a lot of this pagan stuff that they now follow and have Specifically, the cross I'm talking about here, this little necklace and stuff, are just all from way back pagan to worship, and that's there's no more to it than that. So you decide. I'm just giving the information, but I advise you to do some studying on the Babylonian call. You can go online if you want to pay to join. You, uh, let's see, when I looked at it. About eight years ago, it's only around a hundred bucks. The Library of Congress, it's a terrific place to go. Library of Congress, you won't regret it if you're into research and study and you really would enjoy it. So the radio is short and I hope you got something from it and understanding that the relics you have today that you hold so dear that you put more emphasis on that end up on your spiritual well-being and on your spiritual growth all come out of paganism there's no denying that and I leave it at that and you can come to your own conclusion from there I thank you for your time oh one more thing I see on the news that where atheists are attacking these marine and Camp Pendleton I was out there at one time, I know what they're talking about. When they had these crosses up, two crosses to, to represent the men that have died there, you know, died in battle. And now the atheists, I'm sure most of you have seen it on the news, are trying to get it to remove because it's, it, it, it's a Christian symbol. It is, you know, and they are offended by it. And it shouldn't be up there because attack other religions' beliefs. Well, if the court has any common sense and knowledge, they will not remove it because the symbol of the cross in itself is paganism. So the atheists are attacking their own agenda. Duh. But see, that they are ignorant. It's not really attack upon the cross that they care about. It's attack of any religious beliefs 
except for the wrong. And anybody with God given common sense know atheist itself is a religious belief. It's a belief system. It is a religion. So sometimes I think they talk out both sides of their face and and really not even know what they're saying. And I thank you for your time and I hope you got something out of understanding what Jeremiah is talking about here. And thank you for your time. And bear with me through this cloud policy that might heal up. It might not because the way I was attacked by it through having the shingles. So God bless and hope to come to you again soon.